Uh, so I have a few announcements to make. The first thing is, uh, so today is the, uh, not today, the news vendor problem is the last problem that is required. So you should know news vendor problem and how to solve news vendor problem. That's the last problem that you need to know how to solve for the final exam. After that, which is uh, post Thanksgiving, whatever I'm going to teach is optional. It's all about stochastic optimization. If you want to learn it, you can come to the class. If you don't want to learn it, you don't have to come. Okay, it's not part of final exam, but I feel that stochastic optimization is a very important subject that uh, most of you should know. Um, and so far, we have only talked about deterministic optimization. Uh, the second thing I want to talk about is uh, many students have complained in the past that this course is becoming very difficult. Well, that's the intention of this course is to be very difficult. Uh, <laughs> so. Uh, if this course was not supposed to be difficult, we wouldn't have chosen, I mean, I didn't design this course, this course has been around for 30 years, uh, but we wouldn't have chosen Birthsick as we would have chosen a more benign book uh, for, you, uh, for you all. But the, the purpose of this course is to be difficult so that you guys can prepare for uh, the job market, grad school, research, and whatnot, okay? Uh, one thing that, of course, this course doesn't focus on, well, this course wants to build your analytical skills. We want to build your reasoning skills. You should be able to argue your position uh, for solving optimization problems. But the one thing we did not uh, include as part of this course is developing uh, optimization routines in, say, Python or R, which are more, today, more uh, useful languages from an industry viewpoint. So if you go to industry, nobody will ask you to write an optimization problem in, solve an optimization problem in MATLAB. Okay, they'll probably ask you to do it in R, Python, uh, Hadoop, or some other uh, more modern um, languages or software packages or systems, uh, software, uh, well, uh, yeah. So they'll ask you to solve these problems on the cloud or They'll ask you to solve these problems on some cluster or on a supercomputer or whatever, you know, or, or on an engine module. So that is something that's not part of this course, I admit, so that doesn't build your skills to do that kind of job. But that's something you should probably have taken as part of the project, okay? So the, the purpose of the project is for you to discover your own interest and figure out how the topics that we have learned in this class can help you uh, achieve your objectives and your goals, okay? If you want to go to Amazon, you probably should pick a problem as part of the project that solves uh, some issue that Amazon faces on a day-to-day -day basis, okay? Or if you want to go to a car manufacturer, you should probably pick up a topic that's useful for a car manufacturer. So the bottom, bottom line is this course is supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to build your analytical skills. It's supposed to... Uh, uh, widen your horizon and improve your skills about arguing why an algorithm would work and why an algorithm would not work. So, uh, so yeah, I mean, if you, if you don't want to build those skills, probably you shouldn't have taken this course. So we will talk about uh, that issue in this class, okay? We'll talk about regret minimization. Uh, that's another class of optimization problem. And we'll talk about it in this class. And uh, to give you a preview, Humans are regret minimizers, okay? We don't like regrets. Uh, so I'll talk about what exactly mathematical function, what is exactly regret, and how you should minimize it, okay? Uh, but that's part of this class. So let's, uh, let's get started. So review of probability theory. Uh, so some of you might have seen probability before, some of you may not have seen probability before. Uh, we are not going to go very deep into probability theory. It's just a very basic introduction to probability. Um, and uh, and uh, we'll hopefully cover probability and some, uh, some stochastic optimization formulations um, in this class. So probability, we started with omega. That's the set of uncertainties. P, which is a function from 2 to, well, 
A, which is a subset of omega, that is an event, P, which maps all the subsets of omega to closed interval 0, 1, that is probability distribution. What else do we need? Oh, x which maps omega to r is known as random variable and what else? Yeah, y which maps omega to rn is a random vector. Okay. So those are the basic definitions. Let me give you some example. Omega, well, let me start with a discrete set. Omega 1, omega k. Okay, so this is the discrete set. Uh, so if you think of a die that you roll for playing whatever games you like to play, uh, your omega would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So for a die, omega is 1, 2, 6. Okay? What's an event? So let me say A is omega 1, omega 2. Okay, that's an event. In this case, the probability that is assigned to every omega i is 1 over 6. Okay, in this case, in the case of a die, okay, you can assign different probabilities to different omega k's or omega i's. So if, if your a is equal to omega 1 comma omega 2, so if a was equal to 3 comma 4, then the probability of the set omega 1 and omega 2 is equal to probability of omega 1 plus probability of omega 2, which is equal to 2 over 6 or 1 over 3. Okay. So in the case of uh, discrete set, you assign probability to each individual, each individual object within omega, within the set omega, and then the probability of any event is just sum of the probability of individual elements within that event. Okay, so that's a fairly uh, straightforward, simple to understand uh, example. You could have, so that's example one. This is what you will use for assignment six, problem three, or problem four. Okay, so uh, that's a fairly simple example. Uh, we are not going to go more detailed stochastic optimization problem. So this is all that you need to know as far as doing assignment or final exam is concerned. Example two is omega equals 0 to 1. Okay, and so an event A in this set could look something like A comma B. Okay, and let's say my probability distribution, I have defined A comma B as B minus A. Okay, assuming that 0 is less than or equal to A is less than or equal to B is less than or equal to 1. Okay, so we have defined a probability distribution over the entire set. Of course, probability, uh, one of the features of probability is its additive. 
So if you have A1 and A2 such that A1 intersection A2 equals to null set, then probability of A1 union A2 is probability of A1 plus probability of A2. Okay. So if the sets are disjoint, the probability gets added. So if your sets are like this, this is your A1, this is your A2. You want to find the probability of the union of these two sets, you just add the probability of A1 plus probability of A2. So, uh, so yeah, we did that, we used that idea here in this case, okay. Uh, so omega 1 and omega 2 are disjoint sets. So if I want to find the probability of omega 1 comma omega 2, I just add the probabilities and I get the probability of the event A. Uh, this is known as, by the way, this is known as uniform distribution, uniform distribution, which is something you might have studied. Uh, and example three, your omega could be equal to R. And in this case, I am going to use um, probability density function. What is probability density function? So let me say that my G of omega is given by 1 over 1 over square root of 2 pi exponential minus omega square over 2, okay. And then I am going to define my probability of A comma B as integral from A to B, G of omega, D omega, okay. So that's, uh, so this is known as probability density function, PDF. Any questions so far? No? Okay. So there are two things in probability that uh, we should uh, we should know for the problem for the news vendor problem that we are studying. So the first thing is uh, cumulative distribution function of x of omega. So that is defined by, so f is a cumulative distribution function, f of a is defined as probability of x of omega less than a, okay. So that's a CDF. And in case uh, your omega looks something like this, uh, so omega is a subset of real line, then the expression simplifies substantially. So this would be uh, 
prob so so if omega was r the pdf was g of omega and x of omega was just omega itself then the expression actually is integral minus infinity to a g of omega d omega yeah okay the second thing that i want to talk about is expected value so let's see what expected value is So the expected value of x of omega is equal to integral x of omega g omega d omega over the entire space omega. Okay. So this is all that we need to understand stochastic optimization, at least what we'll cover in this particular class. Any question? No? This is probably something that uh, those, at least those in EC would have already seen it in many of the courses undergraduate courses and especially in communications or is probability a required course for ECE undergrads? It's a required course? Okay. So a lot of people would have seen this already. Okay. So when you have uncertainty, when you want to optimize and you have uncertainty, as was the case with uh, uh, with Warren Buffet, and as is the case in uh, in uh, news vendors' problem, there are many things that you can do. Okay, when you have uncertainty, okay, in deterministic thing, these these formulations would not matter, but in stochastic setting, these formulations matter. So I want to talk about three formulations if you want to solve an optimization problem there are three possible way to formulate if you have uncertainty in your system so the first is find x star that is the argument of expected value of f x comma omega x in whatever, some capital X. Okay, so we have some uncertainty in the system. We have a cost function f, uh, which is a, f is a function from x cross omega to r. We have some probability distribution over omega, okay? And what we are doing is just averaging the function over all possible omega, okay? We are averaging the function over all possible omega for every value of x, and then we want to find the x 
that minimizes this expected value. So whenever you take the expected value, if you take the expected value with respect to omega, which is the case here, this expectation actually becomes independent of omega because of course you have averaged it out uh, and then it's just a function of x. So if you want to see it in, in a different format, this is argmin of integral f of x comma omega g of omega d omega okay so this is uh, what you want to minimize so you have integrated with respect to omega and all you are left with is a function of x and you want to find the minimum value of this integral so that's something that all of us understand that's something that was also the case in the news vendor problem The second condition, which is interesting from many engineering perspective, is risk sensitive <laughs> is a risk sensitive optimization which can be formulated in several ways, but a common way is to find X star that is arg min of x and x expected value of e raised to f x comma omega so what's happening in the risk sensitive optimization you've changed the weight of the function value yeah so yes uh, you know I don't want to say changing the weight of the events because that means you are distorting the probability distribution itself but in this case you're not distorting the probability distribution you're distorting the weight the loss function itself okay so so what is this this is argument of integral e raised to fx comma omega g of omega d of omega okay so what you do is when you are doing risk sensitive optimization for those values of omega which leads to a much higher loss what you do is you scale that you scale those losses much more than what it actually costs you so for instance your original so you have distorted your cost function so your original function looked something like like this okay this is your f of x comma omega as a function of omega for a fixed value of x and what you did was you took that exponential term and then you distorted the function and the function actually looks something like this this is your e raised to f x comma omega and omega okay so you become very sensitive to events that can lead to higher cost okay you become sensitive to events that leads to higher cost and that's why it's called risk sensitive optimization this is known as risk neutral okay that's risk neutral this is risk risk sensitive you are sensitive to higher cost events why would this optimization problem be useful so those of you who would study electricity markets you would realize in, in electricity market you don't want to have you don't want to be risk neutral so what happens in electricity market let's say a transformer burns out in some location let's say the university transformer burns out uh, that leads to a sudden drop in demand in the market if you look at the market that leads to a sudden drop of demand of maybe a few megawatt hour, a few megawatts right of electricity 
which means some generator somewhere has to start reducing the production of electricity right so when they do when the electricity market optimization is done they don't want so they want to make sure that they take into account risks associated with burning of transformer uh, generator outages uh, some transmission line going down for whatever per, for, for whatever reason or some other events that could happen um, uh, some other event that could happen that could lead to a cascading effect and thereby a blackout okay so electricity markets frequently use risk sensitive optimization in order to minimize the losses associated with those rare events that don't happen every day but it can happen at any point of time okay it won't give you a warning beforehand one other way of uh, formulating risk oh risk sensitive is also useful in finance for instance where you don't want to invest in portfolios that are very risky okay so you want to have lower weight on portfolios that are risky uh, the other formulation for risk sensitive would be i want to minimize expected value of fx omega such that the probability that hx omega is less than equal to 0 is greater than equal to 1 minus delta okay where delta is a very small delta is a very small number okay so this is another way of formulating a risk sensitive optimization so with very high probability you want some constraints to be satisfied and then you want to minimize the expected cost so this kind of uh, optimization problem is useful uh, say in places like Walmart or refrigeration systems or uh, Target or you know these large supply chain companies who have to stock items before Thanksgiving okay Thanksgiving is coming up a lot of people are going to buy different items okay so they will run these kind of optimization problems to figure out how many items they need to stock in their individual stores so as to meet the demand okay but not have to pay a lot of money to move things around here and there at the last minute okay so it's uh, so there are two ways of formulating this class of problems and the third way which is my favorite way is regret minimization okay so let's see what a regret is. Uh, regret. Let me delete this part. How many of you have done regret minimization before as part of your research or something? No one? Okay, so this is interesting. What is regret? Okay, what do you call regret? In, in life, what do you say, I, I'm regretting something? What, what exactly do you mean by regretting? Maybe some of you are regretting taking this course. You can, <laughs> you can, uh, <laughs> you can illuminate some light on what exactly it means to have a regret in life. So yeah. Had you known? Had you known Omega? Right? Yeah. So, so that's that's exactly right. So regret is, if you had known Omega, you would have done something else, right? But since you didn't know Omega beforehand, you took an action and then, essentially paid for it. Okay. <laughs> so. So the regret, if you picked X as your action and omega was the uncertainty, is given by F of X comma omega minus minimum of X in X, F of X comma omega.
okay and this is greater than equal to 0 oh i see i'm using the same notation let me change the notation here make it y and y okay so if you had known omega you would have picked an action y star which solves this problem okay but because you did not know well but so so what is your regret you actually picked an action x okay instead of picking an action y star you picked an action x so your regret is what you actually received because of your action x and what you could have done had you known what omega was beforehand okay and so in regret minimization you want to find minimize x so as to uh, so you want to minimize the expected regret okay where you take the expectation with respect to omega now regret minimization is completely useless for static optimization problems okay because in static optimization problems regret doesn't mean anything okay regret is meaningful when you are doing dynamic optimization okay because then there is some uncertainty that is evolving over a period of time and as you receive more and more information you want to take better and better action so as to minimize the overall regret okay does that make sense okay so if you are taking a single course only once in your life doesn't matter whether the course is difficult or easy but if you are going to take a sequence of course that most of you will probably do then regret minimization is a is is a thing that you should probably try to do which is try to ask people what omega is okay do some survey and then you take an action uh, accordingly okay that will minimize your regret otherwise you will accumulate regret and over a period of time the expected regret will be large uh, you don't want that to happen uh for a large number of machine learning task people have started analyzing regret expected regret more often than trying to solve problems of this type um i have my own views why that is useful and my personal view my personal opinion is that the reason why it is useful is sometimes solving these problems are very difficult so you come up with a heuristic and you try to show that the expected regret for those heuristic that you have come up with is bounded or is small or the average regret is going to zero or something of that sort okay so uh, those of you who might be working in machine learning will see this expected regret thing more often than other people and you know i i work i mean some part of my work is to design markets for human systems and humans by their very nature are regret minimizers okay so humans don't want to have regret they don't care about risk neutrality or risk well sometimes people are risk sensitive but by and large most people try to minimize regret okay they don't want to have regrets when they die so um so that's why regret minimization is also useful if you are designing a system particularly for human beings Okay any question so these are the three major optimization formulations that you might encounter when you are dealing with stochastic optimization questions no uh for in order for me to do that i should have some j of omega or something here okay so so that i am trying to do some sort of fourier decomposition of this loss function but that's not what i am doing all i am doing is scaling the loss function so let's say my uh uh let's say my if i pick 
let us say I have three actions, okay? 0, 1 and 2. And if I pick 0, my expected, so if f of 0 comma omega is almost like this, flat, and for 1, it is a little curved, and for 2, it is a little bit more curved. What this exponential factor is doing is for, for values that are large, it is making it much larger. Okay, so it's it's scaling it, but non-linearly. Okay, so the scaling is like this, and in this case, the scaling is much more steep. Okay, so you are essentially changing the very nature of the objective function. Instead of this as your objective function, you now have exponential of. No, it doesn't. It doesn't. Okay, if you want to capture the frequency, then you have to have some e raised to j omega term here to to extract a frequency of. I haven't seen any. I haven't seen any formulation. I see. Maybe that is true. I, I don't know. I haven't seen those papers. Yeah. Is yes. there a reason we use E instead of like 10? Like you can use whatever you want. Matter. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, of course, different numbers will give you different answers. Okay, but uh, E is, I don't know why people use E. Yeah, but people use E more often than anything else. It's not quite something like moment generating function. No, it's not moment generating function. Okay. Uh, moment generating function would be expected value of e raised to x. Okay, uh, but here it's maybe you can think of it as moment generating function. But moment generating function doesn't capture the frequency. The characteristic polynomial does. It does. Uh, not the characteristic polynomial. The characteristic function, which is e raised to jx, that's the characteristic function. This is moment generating function. And this is whatever. <laughs> expected value of the ex exponent, expected value of e raised to the function itself, the loss function itself. Okay, so they, these are very different, different uh, quantities. Okay. Any other question? Okay. So what have we done so far? We realize that there are problems in which there is some future uncertainty. Uh, news vendor problem is one such problem. It's called. It has different names, uh, but the most common name would be a two-stage linear program with recourse. Uh, we realize that Warren Buffet was a news vendor at one point of time, and at some point of time, he became the richest person on the planet. So. Uh, so news vendor problem is important, okay? Uh, and then we did a review of probability, which many of you have already taken before. Uh, it was a very quick review. And then we studied three different ways of formulating a stochastic optimization problem, okay? So let's now go back to news vendor problem and see how exactly to solve that problem. Okay. Uh, news vendor. news vendor problem okay so we want to minimize with respect to x the expected value of cx which is the cost of buying newspaper minus p y omega minus r of w should i write it as w or you might get confused between omega and w. Let me write it as z. 
But there is a constraint, and the constraint is y of omega plus z of omega should be less than equal to x. So this is what you sell. This is what you return. Okay, so that's my optimization formulation. Okay, so what is the problem? This is the cost of buying newspaper that I'm going to incur in the morning. This is the revenue that I will earn by selling the newspaper. So it depends on how much demand for that particular newspaper is. This is the revenue I will earn by returning the newspaper back to the manufacturer for a very small uh, value R. So typically your P is greater than C is greater than R is greater than 0. Okay. So the price, selling price of newspaper is higher than the cost price of the newspaper, which is higher than the return price of the newspaper. What you sell plus what you return cannot be greater than X. So it has to be less than or equal to x. OK. So how do we go about solving it? OK, so this is known as two-stage two stage linear program with Recourse. Uh, we'll see. Not well. You can, but we will see how to use Lagrange multiplier if you want to. Okay. So two-stage linear program. So two-stage why? Because there are first stage where you buy X newspapers, and the second stage where you sell and return newspapers. So those are the two stages. Linear program, it's clear that it's a linear program because it's, uh, the cost function is linear in the uh, optimization variables. And with recourse, what does recourse mean? What does recourse mean? Okay, so, so the recourse means that guess what? There is an uncertainty. So what is omega? Omega is number of customers. customers who bought newspaper. Yes, we will assume that we know the distribution of omega. Okay, so the recourse part means that at some point of time, I'm going to observe this random variable, something that I did not know earlier. I'm going to observe it, and based on what I observe, I'm going to take an action. Okay, and I can adjust my action in the second stage based on the information that I receive. Okay, that's the recourse part. Okay. So in first stage, I don't know omega. In second stage, I learned about how many customers came to me and bought the newspaper. So that's a new information that I did not have earlier. And based on that, I decide how many I want to sell and how many I want to return. Okay, so let's, so how do we solve this problem? Well, we have learned uh, from dynamic programming that whenever you have a multi-stage optimization problem, you go backward, okay? So now we need to solve stage two problem first, find out the value function, plug it into the stage one problem, and then find the optimal solution. 
Yeah. Uh, wouldn't it the inequality be an equality? Yes, in that case it will become an equality. We'll prove it in the next part. But your R could be equal to zero as well, in which case you can just throw away the newspaper. You don't have to go back all the way to return it. Yeah. So what is my stage two problem? So it's collect all omega terms together, okay? So collect all the omega terms together, so I want to minimize minus P Y of omega minus R W of omega such that y of omega plus, oh, not w, z. z of omega is less than equal to x. This is with respect to y of omega and z of omega. Okay, and by the way, y of omega is actually equal to omega. So, y of omega is equal to omega. Okay? So, now I have to solve this minimization problem what would the answer be? So now you, uh, your question comes into picture. There are two ways to solve this problem. One is by intuition, which is the incorrect way of solving it. And the second one is by using Lagrange multiplier, which is the correct way of solving it. But I will apply the intuition and write the answer here. Okay. So the answer is, if you solve this minimization problem, you have y star of omega equals omega no, it's not omega. It's minimum of omega comma x and z star of omega is maximum x minus omega comma zero. Yeah. So let's look at this problem, this solution closely. How many newspaper are we going to sell? Well, if the number of customers is less than x, then I will sell omega number of newspapers, right? Because that's going to get me some profit. On the other hand, since I only have x newspapers in the second stage, if the number of customers is greater than x, then I end up selling only x newspapers, okay? So that's optimal number of newspapers you are going to sell based on the new information that has been realized in the second stage. And then this is the rest of the newspapers that you have to return in case uh, x minus omega is a positive quantity. So that solves my second stage problem. And if you look at this optimization problem, you have you have parameters y, z, and x, but you take the minimum with respect to y and z for every possible value of omega. So this, 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 the minimum of this objective function under this constraint is actually a function of x, which appears in the constraint here, and omega, okay, which is the uncertain parameter. That is realized in the second stage only. We don't know about it in the first stage. Okay, so that's two. That's my stage two optimization problem. We have a two stage pro. We have a two stage problem. We start with the final stage. Now we need to go back to the first stage. So let me write down what this first stage problem is.
So in stage 1, I have to take the current cost, which is Cx. I want to minimize x in R. Cx, that's my current cost. And what should I do for the future cost, which depends on x, but also depends on omega? Well, since in stage 1, I don't know what uh, the omega is. I am going to be risk risk neutral and I just want to take the expected value of this function q x comma omega okay and the expectation is with respect to omega which is the same as saying I want to minimize x in r c x plus integral minus infinity well Omega will always be positive, but let's say minus infinity to infinity uh, Q of x comma omega G of omega D omega. Okay, so this is a bit more complicated optimization problem that we need to solve. Any question? Okay. Two stage problem. We have an option of recourse because we'll gain new information about omega in the second stage. And based on that, I can choose an appropriate value of y and z. So I have an option of recourse. I don't have to decide my entire strategy right now because there is some uncertainty that's going to be realized in the future. So there is an option of recourse. So what am I going to do? I'll collect all the omega terms together, including the inequalities, and I'll formulate an optimization problem, and I'll call it stage two problem. And I compute this function q of x comma omega as a function of x, okay, which appears in the constraint here. And then, because I am risk neutral, I'm not risk sensitive, and I don't want to minimize regret, uh, I'm going to take the expected value of this value function at stage two. So I'll take the expected value of this value function, Q of x comma omega, I'll add the current cost, C of x, to that expected value, and I want to minimize for all possible values of x and r. So in the next class, we will we'll try to solve this particular problem and see what the result looks like okay as a function of p c and r that's all thank you guys see you on monday